You know what? We need some background music. Whoa, 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 what the hell is... There? Is that fixed? Okay, good. No infinite hall of sound mirrors. Oof. Come on, it shouldn't take this long to open up a single video. Open. You've been told. Thank you. There we go. Okay, I best <clears throat> make sure my drink is full before we get on to the day. Yeah. Bit of a warm day. Yeah. Wonder what the forecast says. Also a very nice day. Doggo is visited about a half dozen times wanting pats. She's very loving today. Thirty one. No wonder I said it feels warm. October, game six, Pig Blue, a point-and-click horror-ish adventure? We'll see. Dark Tones. There's a road that runs through the town. It is a road that breaks off from a four-lane highway and curves into the town while getting so narrow that even two cars don't fit side by side, a road which passes by the houses, trees and lakes and eventually connects back to the highway.
It's one of those towns cut off from the world. When a passerby looks out the window, he meets weird stares from weird people. Two different worlds, two different time zones intersect here. Those who live in such places are born and die. Yeah, maybe it's meant to be people who are born here live and die here. Also, it looks like I should move. Yeah, move down there. Those who live in such places are born and die. During that period of time, they do not encounter much that will surprise them. Subtle feelings do not take root in their souls. Fight or flight, their existence is a primitive reaction to the outside world. And then it lagged. Uh, the townspeople were startled by a loud noise towards evening today. They heard the roar of a car driving past the town. They ran to their windows, saw nothing but wheel ruts on muddy roads. A blue sedan had already passed the town centre and entered the forest road. The car was lighting up the identical trees and then leaving them in darkness again, and moving on its way through the forest without leaving any trace. There was nowhere he could turn along the way. First, he were to pass the forest, drive by the lake, and then take the highway that would take him to the outside world. So we have maybe some translation troubles. He was still trying to make sense of the impulse that had made him stray into this town out of the blue. Did the name of the town attract him? What was written there? Welcome to... It has to be in capitals. If you try typing in non-capitals, it does nothing. Come on, it's only allowed to be this many characters. Welcome to Spoopy. He was still trying to make sense of the impulse. What was written there? Welcome to... What? has to be the name of the game? Yes. Okay. Welcome to Pig Blue. No, there was nothing unusual about the town's name. An even more meaningless hole, created by the juxtaposition of two unrelated words. More or less like all town names everywhere. No reason. There are paths before a person, and one has to make a choice, so it cannot be called a choice. He was on the road. He was in motion. There was no question of stopping yet. Maybe one day he would stop for good. But even if he didn't want to move on right now, the road was laying in front of him. Despite everything, life went on, and he chose to turn right. We look at the mirror rear view mirror. Do I have to click it? He saw nothingness that he had left behind. He saw the dark forest. The road and the sky grew into one without leaving any trace of light. A complete nothingness. G'day, FGs. He saw the same nothingness in his own eyes. It was as if a piece of the night had splashed on him and was gnawing at his soul from the inside. But it had been long since the night had taken hold of him. Before he entered this town, months ago, even before he hit the road, he had already started to rot from within, day by day. Open the glove box. Without taking his eyes off the road, presumably, he reached for the glove box. He was throwing his hand randomly inside the glove box. Where is the cigarette, he was murmuring, as the coldness of the metal touched his hand. He forgot that he had put it in there. He smiled. His hand came across a loaded pistol on the dark, lonely road. He ran his fingers along the gun. Just below was a stiff piece of paper. It had to be an envelope. A letter with his name written on it in capital letters that had been left on his doorstep. He'd forgotten even the existence of the letter, let alone reading it. A familiar handwriting, its contents is more or less clear. He didn't need to read it. Check pockets. Here it is, he said. 
Taking a cigarette from the pack and squeezing it between his lips, he pressed the cigarette lighter and waited. Turn on the radio. Driving through the trees at night with classical music doesn't sound bad. I'm going to listen to classical music. Why not? Okay, we're forced to change the channel. Most of the channels are not... So, already, minus one points to the game for having a fake choice. Most of the channels are not working. He went on searching. A static, mechanical sound. It's a nice night in town, the kind of night you don't want to stay at home. You can go out to the front porch and watch the sky, or think of spending time with your loved ones at the lake. However, we still advise you to be careful on the forest road. Beware of deer, pigs, and similar animals that may jump onto the road abruptly. Looking at your phone for a moment while driving, or reaching for a car cigarette lighter would be a mistake, wouldn't it? He reached for the car cigarette lighter. Are you not listening to me? Didn't I just tell you to keep your eyes on the road? You used to be an obedient person, didn't you? Blake? Turn off the radio. The static increased. As he was reaching for the radio, he noticed his hand shaking. One last thing. Smoke your cigarette and get out of town. Go away, Blake. Bleep off, Blake. Turn off the radio. Achievement unlocked. Could you please leave the town? He pulled over and stopped the car. His heart felt like it was going to burst. Blake, he thought. My name is Blake. Well, at least they don't make me guess his name as well as the town's. Minutes, maybe hours passed. His name gets mentioned on a local radio station in a place he doesn't know. Maybe you drank too much again, Blank. Blank. Blake, he thought. He realised he wasn't wrong when he took a look at the car. He saw the bottles that had been thrown onto the back seat. Or was he going crazy? Of course, that was also a possibility. He hadn't seen anyone for a long time. All his interaction with people was limited to the grocery store cashiers. He was handing out the crumpled money that he took out of his pocket without even looking at the faces of the people. After grabbing alcohol, cigarettes, and a few snacks, he would drive on until the next cashier. He didn't see himself as homeless. He had no place to go. Everywhere was his home. The thing was to get used to it. Still, he didn't want to get used to this town, especially after what he'd just been through. Start the engine. Oh crap, he murmured. The car was not running. He looked at the gas gauge and realized that was not the problem. Oh no, realised what the problem was. However, he was sh sure it shouldn't have run out of gas by now. He had not seen any other vehicles since he entered the road. He could wait until sunrise. He didn't want to stay another second in the town, however. Maybe there's a gas station or something nearby. He decided to move on. He got out of the car and looked around. He was in the middle of nowhere. He would need a flashlight. Check glove box. The flashlight wasn't there. An old notebook in the corner of the glove box caught his eye. The corner of the page was folded. There was scribbled text that he could barely read. Man as a matryoshka. So uh, one of the Russian nesting dolls? Man shrinks towards his essence. As he gets closer to his own self, he is purified from the outside world. He robs his soul of the lies he has carved on it since childhood. The illusion of great mess he acquired from a young age leaves its place to awareness. He gets smaller as he grows. Man is a matrushka. Man is called magma. Dreams are replaced by mistakes. If he dies early, he remains blameless. A, E. I'm going to note those down in case the capital letters mean something for later. So the capital letters so far were A and then E. I'm a bit paranoid about them having some meaning and needing them. Perhaps, but perhaps I'm also being wise. We will see. Yeah. Done.
Lake couldn't remember writing anything like that. Still, it wasn't a bad text. He took out the gun from the gun and notebook from the glove box. He oh no, opened the trunk. There were still some useful items in the boot. He was not completely careless. A flashlight was there. Walk. He had no idea where he was going. He simply followed the path, holding the faint light of the flashlight in front of him. Surely the road would lead up somewhere. For all his indifference, Blake was actually quite optimistic about simple things. There was even some hope, though it was frail. Every now and then a small breeze was making the leaves tremble. The forest was moving slowly, the trees swaying on both sides of the road. I just want to get out. He wanted to leave this town as soon as possible. He didn't listen to the rustling of the leaves around him and walked straight ahead. Dot, dot, dot. That's not ominous. He heard a short sound, a deep sound, which broke the silence of the forest. We look behind ourselves, and there was Shai Labouf. The light of the flashlight did not react, or did not reach his car. His car was somewhere in that great darkness. Then he aimed his flashlight at the forest. The light met with the dark trunks of the trees, only to illuminate the tip of his nose. There was nothing remarkable in sight. He turned back. That sound again. It was as if a small stone had rolled from one place to another. Something must have been moving along the way. A snake that had lost its soil? Or the steps of a hesitant fox. There was a silhouette in the distance, on that borderline where the light could barely touch. Someone facing him. Get closer. He slowly took a few steps, the silhouette became more clear. A boy. In a parka. Shout. Hey! There was no response. Tensing up at the boy's unresponsive stance. You okay, mate? I think you're lost. Take some steps towards the boy. Is your home nearby? Do you want to take me to take you home? Where do you live? Maybe I can help you. Step closer. The boy took a few steps back. Blake saw a frightened expression on the boy's face, but there was something even stranger. Even though he couldn't see the face in detail, he was struck by the meaning in his eyes. It was, wasn't fear of the unknown. It was as if the boy recognised Blake, and suddenly he turned and started running into the darkness. Stop. His voice tore the night. Owls answered him, and then silence. He walked a few steps where the boy had just stood. There was now an object shining under his flashlight. Blake takes the object and examines it. A matryoshka. Upon further inspection, he saw that it had a locking mechanism. A E? Yes, maybe. Man shrinks towards his essence. Oh. Well, I thought it was A. Oh, maybe it's every capital. M A. Ooh, maybe it's every capital letter instead. If only um, out of place capitals. If all capitals. Then it would be M A H A T E H M M D I B. Which says Mahait Dib? Hmm.
Some letters were written differently in the text. Yeah, there was an A, and there was an E. And that was it. Okay, it doesn't think that it's AE. Oh, there's a K up here that I didn't notice. Well, that's on me. I'm an idiot. K-A-E. Still nothing. Hmm. Well, let's try every single capital. M. M. K. A. H. A. T. E. H. M. M. D. I. B. No, that's too many letters. That's too many letters. K. A. E. Everything. Oh! This doesn't have a full stop here. Yeah, okay. Cave. Yes. Lister of Smeg. K A. The heck? A uh, game? Game? It didn't like something there. No, it's not that either. Backwards? B ache, perhaps? No, that's not it either. Okay, let's double check literally every letter. Okay. A. E. Maybe that's meant to be capitalized? B. K-A-E-B. No. Okay, backwards. B-E-A-K. Then I have no idea. Rude game. Well, we'll try combining them in different orders. Bake makes sense. But that's the only other rearranging of those letters that is a real word. So I don't know, I guess we're done.
look again, it's right there. We've literally gone over every capital M, lower A, lower N. Lower S, lower H, lower R, lower I, lower N, capital K, lower S, lower T, lower O, lower W, lower A, lower R, lower D. K has been noted down. Lower S, lower H, lower I, lower S. Lower E, lower S, lower S, lower E, lower N, lower C, lower E. Capital A because it's the start of a new, new sentence. Lower S, lower H, lower E, lower G, lower E, lower T, lower S, lower C. L O S S E R T O H I S O W N S E L F all lower comma lower 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 capital because it's a new word or new sentence space lower 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 capital K A checks lower 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 oh come on there's an L maybe where's another L yeah this one's slightly curvy and this one is right angled uh Caleb No. The password is not Caleb. However, something in the name seemed familiar. Ale? Is it rearranging Caleb into Blake? Okay, rearrange Caleb into Blake. It was the second time that Blake had come across his own name, since he had come to town. But he had no ties to the town. He had never been here before in his life. I know Caleb usually spelled with a C, I thought. So Caleb with a K was odd. <clears throat> uh, Lister. But first, the radio, then the child's eyes, now the matryoshka. He slowly opened it. There wasn't a smaller doll inside. Then it's not a matryoshka. Just a key. He put the key in his pocket. As he stood up, he saw the road in the darkness waiting in front of him. It was an ironic night for someone who was barely living on. He had to somehow move on, find his way through the blinding darkness. A journey through shades of black, from one darkness to the next. There was no point in going back now. There must have been a settlement or something in the direction the boy was going. He heard a stir in the bushes. His hand reflexively went to his gun. Maybe this time it really... It was really an animal running through the bushes. After tonight's weird events, he was on his toes. Of course, the fact that he didn't... <laughs> oh, bless me. The fact that he didn't drown his sorrow. <laughs> bless me. The fact that he didn't drown his sorrows in alcohol after a really long time also had some effect on him. The reality he had been running away from finally caught him sober and took hold of him. It was making fun of him. And I'm gonna sneeze again. No? Yes? Maybe he was right to run away. He could not understand reality. Where was he? Who was he? And why was it happening? His name was Blake. He had been left. He had hit the road. And he was on the road again. This was the summary of his life. He went on walking. On the road again. Hmm. 
In the distance, the number of the trees decreased gradually. The sky seemed wider. First he saw the lights, reflecting in the puddles on the road. Then the motel, which had become one with the forest. The Homeland Motel was written on the sign. Although it was in pretty bad condition, considering his current desperation, it looked like a home to him. He went in. Although the lights were on, it was dim inside. The shadows cast by the furniture were enshrouding everything, and as a result, the inside of the motel seemed more cramped than it truly was. The receptionist stood there, absent-minded, Lee. He was an old, elegantly dressed man. Walk towards him. I have trouble interpreting that. Maybe that's an ear, and then that's an eye, and then that's a nose, and then that's a mouth. Oh, and then that's a, um, a white shirt, and he's got a tie, and the other half of him's in shadow. Blake stopped right in front of the man. The man had his fair share of shadows. Like objects, his face remained in the dark. I would have interpreted quicker if I'd read this. Good evening, said Blake. Good evening. I'm a traveller. Are there any... His word was left unfinished, the man said in a calm tone like an actor whose time had come. We are informed, sir. Blake shuddered. He tried to say something but couldn't open his mouth. My advice for you is to spend the night here. Unfortunately, there is no gas station nearby. If you wish, I'll drop you off in town tomorrow morning. Someone there will help. The town of Pig Blue is used to those who are lost. You've lost your way too, sir. Blank understood the implication in the question. Yes, he had lost his way. How do you know my name? I guess you don't remember, but it's okay. It's not the first time you've come here. We welcomed you before. It's your first time coming through alone. I hope you don't mind me stating this fact. He hadn't remembered coming here before or bringing Emma. Emma. It's been a long time since he mentioned that name. Presumably that should be we. First, something was missing in the house. Abstract, inexpressible, indefinable. There'd been a shift in the view of the world that they were accustomed to. A tiny crack opened up that would spread over time. When he came home one evening, Emma wasn't there. She didn't leave a note. One of the toothbrushes in the cup was missing. There was plenty of space in the wardrobe, the emptiness that came and settled in the house. Emma had left a lot of little gasps behind. If, Bra if Blake were to say a word, he would drown in the echoes of his own voice. Weeks later, he found an envelope on his doorstep. Blake was written on the envelope. He recognised the handwriting. He didn't need to read it, but he couldn't throw away the letter either. I never brought anyone here. Memory could mislead, sir. Now that I think about it, it was clear from every aspect that it was not your idea to come here. How can I say you're a bit like a guest? I think one of your friends... Friends? Of course, sir. People usually come here on a recommendation. If you follow the path behind the motel, you will reach a lake. By the way, the lake looks different at night. Let me point that out too, sir. One of the guys you came with seemed to know this place well. I think he brought you here. The men I came with. So it wasn't Emma. He tried to make sense what was going on. It was a tiring night. Do you have a room? Of course, says the man. I actually sent you the key. I hope you took it. Yes, but the boy in the forest... I hope he was not disrespectful to you. He's shy, but he is a good boy. As I said, the room is ready. 103. You have the key. Good night, sir. Even though he was left with more questions than before, the fatigue took hold of him. Blake went to room 103. The key was for this room. It was a small and simple motel room. It was clearer than he expected. He threw himself on the bed without delay. He walked a little along the line between sleep and wakefulness. His breathing slowed down, his eyes grew heavy. He was falling down a bottomless white pit. He didn't touch anywhere. He didn't crash into the ground. He seemed to be flying, floating. His feet suddenly hit ground. The soil was wet and soft, tree branches hitting his face. He must have been running. Blake was running through the woods, panting. He was running from something. He was chasing someone. He was soaking wet and the rain was pouring down. 
He would step on mud or trip over a stone and stumble from time to time. Whenever he was about to fall, he would keep his balance and keep running. All of a sudden, he slipped and fell face down on the ground. He immediately turned on his back and tried to breathe, to see if he had any bruises. Something flowing from his forehead to his lips, and it wasn't rain. It was blood. He must have hit his head on a rock. There was no time to think. The urge to survive had taken control. It forced him to stand. Blake realised that no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't get up. He was writhing on the ground like a wounded animal. He couldn't find the strength to shout for help. He lay on his back and waited. He could barely see the moon behind the leaves of the tree. Footsteps were approaching towards him. He tilted his head. There was a shadow coming towards him. Who are you? He wanted to ask, but no word came out of his mouth. The man moved a little closer. Lightning flashed and Blake saw the man pointing a gun at him. If lightning were to strike again, he could see the man's face, but it wasn't necessary. Blake already knew who he was. It was himself. He woke up. When he opened his eyes, he found himself on the back. He found himself on his back on the bed. It wasn't the nightmare he saw that interrupted his sleep. There was some noise coming from upstairs. It was as if furniture was being dragged. He decided to talk to the man at the reception. But there was no one at the reception. The registry was open on the table. Right next to it was a bell to call the receptionist. The door near the desk probably opened into the receptionist's room. Look at the registry. There were eight rooms in total. Four on the ground, four and four on the first. James S. Blake W. John T. Thomas B. and Howard O. Somehow it feels like knowing these names might be relevant. So with the power of print screen, we will save them. Done. I guess we ring the bell. No one was in sight. I guess we knock the door. No response. We go in. There was nobody. It was a narrow room. There was a window overlooking the forest, a bed right in front of it, and a nightstand next to it. A key cabinet was also mounted on the wall. I'll go and talk to myself then, Blake thought. Go back to our room? No, go to the other rooms. Okay, so I was right to save that information. Do we want to go to room... Do we want to go see James S... John T, Thomas B, or Howard O. Uh, let's work our way from the bottom of the list up. So we'll go to room 203. Seeing as someone was moving furniture in the room above us and we were in room 103, 203 would make sense. Blake knocked the door and waited. Gurgly noises? It sounds like someone was being choked. Are you okay? Open the door. Try to. The door is locked. Someone might be in trouble. I might have to go get a key and come back. Okay, so go in the room. Look at the key cabinet. It was locked. A piece of paper was stuck to the side of the lock. Probably a clue. Read the paper. Password. Coffee plus 201-103-203 plus heart plus music. Um, two oh one is John T. Coffee, cup, tea, heart, note. Cup, T W O heart note cup tau heart note mug there's too many things interpreting this could be is this cup 
mug, coffee. I mean, it looks like a mug to me, but it could... It could be so many other things. Oh, okay, here we go. A cup, some numbers, a heart, and a musical note. Cup, John Blake Howard, heart note. Cup. Teacup? Because it's John T. Teacup? W. Woe heart. Woe heart note. Woward's note. Teacup Wohart note. Cup tea. a number. Well, let's just add up the numbers. 507? Hmm. Maybe we're meant to go to a different room then. Sorry, person choking to death. I guess we're leaving you to choke to death. 202. Hmm. 202 should be Thomas W. Why can't I go there? Okay. What about 201? Also not allowed. Okay, what about... 202? Also not allowed. What about... 101? James promises he would come again. Room 101. So we've tried every room now. Except 203 again. Where it says we need a key. What if we go back to our room? There was an envelope on the table that wasn't there last time. Let's examine it. His name was written on it in capital letters, and he knew the owner of the handwriting. It was Emma. But he had left the letter in the car. Had he perhaps slipped it in his pocket in a moment of absent-mindedness? No matter what he did, would the letter always end up in front of him, as if it desired to be read? Read it. The parting had happened long ago. How much could words about it hurt now? He couldn't be let alone once again. Blake. Considering that we no longer speak a word to each other, how necessary this letter is, is debatable. Maybe you'll read the words here in a cold and indifferent way as if you were checking a product's expiry date. 
Because you've been looking at me like that for a long time, you didn't see me, Blake. You were looking at me, and I wasn't there for you. I'm not talking about a figurative absence, a figurative absence, but as if my physical existence was erased from your world as well. I wasn't there. Of course, I couldn't go on like this. One could not bear to witness her own value diminishing day by day. I came to sleep next to you in the hope that you would get better. Some day that you would come out of the cave. The silence that you hid yourself in, but you didn't. As you can imagine, this is not a parting letter. We've already broken up. We've already broken up before I left the house. I was compelled to write you because I think you should get help. As an old friend, someone who still cares for you, I wanted to help you one last time. You were not aware of the darkness you have fallen into. No, I couldn't stay by your side to shed any more light on you, but maybe this letter will help you see what's wrong. The rest is up to you. I wish I knew what turned that cheerful, lovely man into this. You didn't tell me. I don't think you've told anyone. Whatever that thing is, it devoured you from the inside. There's nothing left from the person I love but a dead man. I don't hate you. I don't love you either. How can I say I have no feelings for you? However, I feel nothing against armchairs, nor against vases. This sounds like it's an idiom. I mean, you've become one of them, Blake. One of those inanimate, cold objects. I think it was May 5th. Yes, there was something strange in your gaze when you returned from that trip. I didn't take it seriously. Looking back now, I can't help but think that you started to change from that day. I don't blame you. Take care of yourself. Maybe your only fault was doing nothing. Emma. The letter ended here. Emma, achievement unlock. You've read the letter. Blake's palms were soaking wet. He gripped the letter tightly, holding it like he was going to stab something. He went into the bathroom in an ecstatic state. He was shaken once more as he splashed water on his face and looked at the mirror. There's a writing on the mirror. A note was written on the mirror. Cut the bear. What could that mean? He left the letter on the table. Cut the bear. Can we read the letter again? Is it the same? It seems like it's the same. And then it takes us to the reception. still have no idea about this. Cup. still does nothing. I'll give it three goes. The registry hasn't changed. try all the rooms again now that we've read our letter. It's not 101. What about 201? It's not 201. What about 202? It's not 202. What about 203? 
We still need the key. Well, what about the other rooms? What if we try the blank rooms? Room 104 was not locked. There was a television in the middle of the room. He turned on the TV. Uh, let's open channel one. Once he was just an ordinary boy. Now he is defender of the universe. Look, there he goes now. Off to save the universe yet again. Okay, what about channel two? Okay. Channel three. Channel four. Soft running water? Channel five. A crowded space of people milling around. Six. Seven. Eight. Laughing. Nine. Oboe. Or at least soft wind, wind instrument music. And then there's no other channels. You can't enter two numbers. What about zero? No, you can't enter zero either. Hmm. Once he was just an ordinary boy. Now he is... So that was 104. What about 204? 204 is also not locked. Full of books. On the shelves, the floor, the desk. Sure, look at the desk ones. There's an open book on the desk. Some parts of it were marked. The love song. Okay, so this is a hint. Heart plus note might be love song. On the afternoon, the evening, sleep so peacefully, soothed by long fingers, asleep tired, or its maligners, stretched on the floor here besides you and me, should I, after tea and cakes and ices, tea, cakes, ice, question mark? Have the strength to force the moment to its crisis. But though I have wept and fasted, wept and prayed, though I have seen my head grown slightly bald, brought in upon a platter, I am no prophet, and here's no great matter. I have seen the moon moment of my greatness flicker, and I have seen the eternal footman hold my coat and snicker, and in short I was afraid. And indeed there will be a time for the yellow smoke that slides along the street, rubbing its back upon the window panes. There will be a time, there will be a time, to prepare a face to meet the faces that you meet. There will be a time to murder and create, a time for all of the works of days of hands, that lift a drop, that lift and drop a question on your plate. Time for you and time for me, and time yet for a hundred indecisions, and for a hundred visions and revisions before the taking of toast and tea. For I have known them all already, known them all have known the evenings, mornings, and afternoons. I have measured out my life with coffee spoons. I know how the voice is dying with a dying fall. Beneath the music from a farther room, so how should I presume? Okay, and what about the ones on the... No, I wanted to look at the ones on the floor now. J. Alfred Prufrock. 
That might be relevant as well. Plus love song. Well, let's just try love song. Oh, but it's it's a number, right? So I can't like type love song. To start brute forcing a 10,000 entry password. Help me, Stu! Help me, Stu! Bless me. Okay, what if we convert the these numbers each represent a the numbers represent the rooms, the rooms match our names. What if the names surnames letters are then again converted to numbers and we add them up? So T plus W plus O two like that literally spells two. Cup two. Cup two love song. Mug two. Mug to love song? Cup, mug, glass. Glass to cup to.
Like, I get we've, we've been hinted at love song, but the rest is... Cup two. Let's try zero zero two. No. Well, maybe it needs a zero in front of the answer because it can have multiple entries. Like maybe maybe five zero seven zero five zero seven is different than five zero seven. No. Well then, I'm open open to ideas from chat. If any of you have ideas on what Cup 2 love song? Cup 2. If we'd encountered any cups... Hmm... Let's re-explore all the rooms. Maybe the registry has changed? Nope. Okay, I'm willing to look this up. Cup.
This is a really obscure puzzle and vastly more, vastly more complicated than the previous ones. The solution involves finding subtle clues in the various rooms. Oh, holy moly. Okay. So see this is T, cup of T. Cup T. What we're supposed to supposedly do. We don't care about the number. Is Note the number of times this poem mentions T. One. Two. Must have been a third that I missed, because supposedly there's three. Oh no, tea or coffee, sorry, there is three. So it's three mentions of tea in the poem, two for the thing that I did actually understand how to interpret, which was the use the letters of their... Well, I can explain the one I can explain. The number puzzle, which says three numbers in a row, and you look at these names and it's the surname's letter, T-W-O, T-W-O is in order, 201. 103, 203. T-W-O. So there's three mentions of tea or coffee in the silly poem. Two, three, two. But how do we get love song or heart note? Heart is meant to be the letter that we get from our girl, friend, which is May the 5th, and therefore the number is 5. And note is the TV plays music when you set it on channel 9. Oh, good lord. Yeah, that's a bit... That is a bit obscure. That is super obscure. No. I would- I think I would have just brute force that if I was gonna get that. I would have been doing that by brute force. Well, let's go to the room above us and see if the person is still choking. There's a teddy bear in the room. Where was the sound coming from? Cut the bear. There's a red crayon inside. in the registry with my crayon? What 
the hell would we do with a crayon? Yeah, no, sorry game. You've, uh... You've lost me. Alright, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to go to 103. You go back to your own room. There's supposedly going to be new writing on the mirror. You did nothing. Images appear before our eyes. The writing on the mirror changes again. Do you remember? So is it do you remember question mark? Is it do you remember exclamation mark? Is it do you remember full stop? Is it do you remember semicolon? Is it do you question mark remember full stop? Do you remember question mark? He couldn't remember. Go fishing. The mirror says. We know where we had to go. There was a path behind the motel. It led to the lake. Walked through the darkness. Ahead was a sky-coloured plain. It was the lake. The path led to a pier by the lake. There was a small boat attached to the pier. We jump on the boat. It, there's a motorboat. There was a fishing rod fixed to the boat with its tip in the lake. All he had to do was... Reel it in. Something is stuck on the hook. Very light, almost non-existent. We reel it in. Whatever the hook had caught was in front of him now. It wasn't a fish. It was a thin book. It was quite wet, but still not completely dissolved. We try to turn the soft pages each time a small piece falls away. He finds a page in better condition compared to the rest, and he remembers everything. Are we going this weekend? asked Liam. Of course, who's coming? said Blake. They would go fishing. You, me, Tom, and Holden. Holden? I didn't introduce you two, did I? He works in our factory, a kindred soul. He's one who told us about this place, a quiet town. We say let's stay overnight for once. There's also a motel. What do you say? What does Emma say? Blake replied with a laugh. Liam was not wrong, though. Turn right here, Liam said. No, turn right here, Liam, comma, Holden said. He was a quiet, talkative and cheerful man. Blake was sitting in the back seat. He liked to go fishing, but Holden's enthusiasm seemed to be exaggerated. Looking out the window, he saw one of those towns. People who look at outsiders as if they'd just seen aliens. Young, old, children, all the same. An old man, wandering near the hotel, caught his attention. He looked poor and dirty. He was watching Blake and his friends with a cunning glint in his eyes. Maybe he was thinking some suckers with money. In such places, foreigners are objects to be stared at or ripped off. After checking in, they fished the lake all day long. When they retired to their rooms for the night, they were very drunk. Blake was staying with Liam. Shortly after, they entered their room. There was a knock. It was Holden. The fun isn't over yet, he said cheerfully. Now his drunkenness was also boosting his former joy. I have a surprise for you. You first, Blake. Blake tried to say a few words, but found himself on his way to room 203. He had no idea what awaited him. He couldn't think. He was staggering as he walked and stopped, leaning against the wall. The old man was at the door. The other gentleman told me you were coming. Don't worry, he paid the price and opened the door. Blake didn't understand what was going on when he entered. He's my grandson. Despite his drunkenness, Blake suddenly understood everything. There was a boy sitting on the edge of the bed. On his eyebrow, he stood frozen. He didn't know what to do. The blood in his veins started to flow faster. His temples started beating like they were going to explode. His face was on fire. Without saying a word, he pushed the man away and rushed out of the room. He was running, unconsciously panting. When he pulled himself together, he was sitting in the forest, leaning against the tree. 
On a way out of the room, he unconsciously picked up the first object that came into his hands. Somehow, he hadn't let go of it the entire time he was running. It was a colouring book. They didn't talk much about what happened there. Blake never saw Holden again. However, the last time he met Tom and Liam, he understood everything from their eyes. Both had entered that room, and unlike Blake, they had stayed there. I didn't do it, Blake recalled. I didn't do it. Blake did not do it, but he... He could have gone to the police afterwards, but he didn't. He could have spit in his friends' faces, but he didn't. He could have saved a child, but he didn't. Oof. I didn't do anything, Blake muttered on his knees. And that ties back to what our girlfriend was saying. Looking at the scattered book in his hands, Blake remembered the title of the colouring book he was holding whilst leaning against a tree. The Blue Pig. A long silence in his mind, his hand went to his gun. He wasn't a cop, he wasn't a soldier. He had been carrying this gun for quite some time. Oh, no, not suicide. No, no, please. Please, no. He looks at the lake, the trees, the sky. He takes a deep breath. He was about to close his eyes, but he saw the canister on the boat. Look at the canister. Any anything but suicide. He put the gun in his waistband and took the canister. He opened the lid and sniffed. It was gasoline. He returned to the hotel using the path he came from. He went inside and started pouring gasoline. He wandered around the motel until the gas in the canister ran out. Uh, do we go burn ourselves with the motel or do we leave? Let's leave, please. He lit a cigarette. He went opposite the motel and lit his cigarette. He took a breath or two and then threw it. The motel was engulfed in flames. First it cracked and bent then completely collapsed. That was not all. The forest had its share too. He stared blankly at the view as the flames were leaping from branch to branch and the fire was growing. Burn it all down, achievement. Pig blue. Okay, what would I change? Um, make the capitalized letters in that other puzzle a different color. That coffee cup puzzle is just way too ridiculous. Otherwise, that's kind of okay. I liked the sounds in the game. It's certainly dealing with some significant issues. And we get our answer for why we are recognized here from before. We have repressed memories of visiting. And why the child ran away. It gets more creepy and less spooky, the more you know. I liked it more when it was spooky, why don't I have memories? What is this crazy town where people know us? Why are people telling us to get out of the town on the radio? Okay. Game six finished. It's not terribly long. I hope you had an interesting time. I don't know about a good time. I don't think anyone would have a good time playing this, but an interesting time. Peace. Now what do? I kind of thought this would take a bit longer. I kind of had thought that this would take rather a bit longer.
You know what? It is a lovely warm day, and Doggo has been so loving this morning, coming and getting like a dozen extra pats, or getting pats an extra dozen times. I think I will have a bit of a break, take Doggo for a nice walk, and we might come back in what is for me the late afternoon and start the, the next Heroes campaigns. Is anyone I know up and about? had an interesting time and you might see me later with those heroes campaigns but for now doggo walk on a lovely day as well as I kind of need that to uh, pick me up from just how sad and yuck the ending is 